My drinking progressed while I was taking care of my father while he was dying. So for about a month and a half, I was up 24 hours a day, drinking, passing out, coming to. Every day during work, I would leave work and go out to a bar and drink and go back to work and always with an attitude adjustment. Anyone can experience a chemical dependency problem at any time based on um, their, their history or um, issues in their life. So we empathize with that, we don't judge. I mean, when I got here, there was no denying that I had a problem and that, my, that I was powerless over alcohol. I knew I was powerless over alcohol when I was 16 years old and having beer for breakfast. It wasn't working trying to work on my own. I wasn't able to stop and I wasn't able to control it. Well, we feel we can easily identify addiction as a disease in that it's chronic, it's progressive, and it's sometimes fatal. And we see three different components in the addiction. And that's a biomedical component, it's a psychological component, and it's an environmental component. And by understanding it as a disease about something they had no control of to begin with, they're able to work at it more objectively, which, which we find the success rate much higher. The Center for Recovery is the chemical dependency arm of our treatment programs, and we offer inpatient detoxification, partial hospitalization where patients come during the day and go home at night, intensive outpatient where they may work during the day and then um, come to treatment in the evening, and then residential services so patients can stay up to a month and uh, participate in all the clinical programs that we have. I think we offer hope for all of our patients here, psychiatric, chemical dependency, all the people that really need a lot of help. And yes, there is hope. There's a lot of hope. If you think you have a problem, you pretty much have a problem. The, the most difficult step is to pick up that phone and make that phone call. I was scared uh, to admit it, to ask for help, to, to be away. One of the first things I usually say is, I'm glad you called, you know, and that's what we're here to do, we're here to help you. Jan is great about settling you down and saying it's okay. I'll get a little information over the phone, do a brief assessment of what's going on in their lives. She made me feel so good that, and I felt so comfortable that I was able, I even I broke down and cried on the phone with her and I said, I know I need help. Usually that entails about an hour and I really get a complete assessment as to what's going on in their life by law. We do not and cannot give out any information to anybody unless the patient gives us their consent. And that needs to be in writing. If they have insurance and they want me to check it for them, I'm glad to do that. We are contracted with most insurance companies. Addictions are physical issues that have to be treated in a medical setting and then supported with the outpatient um, aftercare and education that helps people remain clean and sober. So when the individual is brought into the facility, they're assessed for what their needs are to support their recovery. If they are in need of a detoxification, which would be with alcohol, opiates, or benzodiazepines such as Valium and Xanax, they will spend some time in our detoxification unit under medically supervised staff and with our medical director. So we take a history and physical before they come in to make sure that we address all the medical problems they have and foresee medical problems they're going to have with the detoxification. One of the basic principles of detox is that we know that usually that the symptoms and detoxification are, are going to go up to about the third day. Blood pressure is going to maximize at that time and the risk of having cardiac problems and so forth there at that time. People have seizure activity and they need registered nurses there who are watching their detoxification and making sure that they have a safe detox. So it's more of a comfortable feeling of which you're regulating their blood pressure, we're taking blood pressures, getting labs, and giving them special adjusting medications and combinations that we use that we've developed over years that other hospitals have used our regimens so that we can end up uh, detoxing that person safely. During the detox process at the Center for Recovery, patients are encouraged to come down to our outpatient program. While you're in detox, they really encourage you to get started, uh, to get a base of getting up and getting out so that you get to your classes. 
five days in detox, and I actually went back to work the following day. At the Center for Recovery, our counselors are really the backbone of the program. Uh, once the initial detoxification is managed by the physicians and nurses, the counselors take over to really begin the rehabilitation process, which involves lectures, uh, group therapy, one-on-one, -on -one, homework, reading assignments, to uh, help people gain the tools that they need to manage their early recovery and their long-term recovery. At the Center for Recovery, what we try to do is maintain an environment that um, primarily has structure, consistency, which are two of the uh, components necessary for someone to be able to get through the early part of their recovery. It used to be that about 50% of patients were diagnosed with dual diagnosis, meaning a psychological disorder along with the addiction. However, now we're seeing much higher percentages, probably more into the 70 and 80 percent. So we decided to bring in Dr. McGraw as a psychiatrist specializing in chemical dependency so that he could ensure that these patients are uh, assessed and that their treatment plans appropriately address the psychiatric issues that may concur be concurrent with their uh, chemical dependency issue. Somebody that's duly diagnosed has an alcohol uh, or drug dependency and at the same time they've got some diagnosable psychiatric condition. Being detoxified or acutely using substances, oftentimes their presentations can mimic psychiatric conditions. When they've been adequately detoxed, if they continue to have symptoms of anxiety or depression, or their history is so well established that they've got some underlying mood or anxiety disorder, uh, I'll get involved. My wish for, for every patient that comes through our center is for them to enjoy ongoing recovery with their families, in, in their jobs, in their spiritual life. And what that means is that their lives would be better than they'd ever been in the past. All the suggestions they gave me you know, go to the meetings, get a sponsor, uh, w you know, work out a schedule. I mean, that has all worked for me. Just being able to wake up, not come to, not have a hangover. I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's amazing how much time you find that you were hiding and drinking and sitting and, and being sedentary that you can replace with good and healthy activities. I definitely have changed. You know, I, I'm, I can drive now. I actually leave the house. I play golf twice a week with my husband. I'm doing yoga twice a week. And I started a kickboxing class this, this week. We provide the components for ongoing recovery. We offer an aftercare program, which meets once a week for a year. And we have an alumni association so that people can get integrated into a community of recovering people. The Alumni Association at the Center for Recovery is phenomenal. It's five to six hundred people strong. They meet every month. We have dances, bowling night, car washes. These events that we're having, we all know that we can't take the first drink or do the drug, so, you know, we're all in the same boat, and we all are having a blast. My daughter and I are very close now. She's like one of my biggest fans. She's my best friend. She's giving me a hug, saying, Daddy, you know, we love you the way you are today.